stop what you're doing, you're addicted to dopamine. Well, we all are. Since the dawn of time, we've been chasing pleasure in some form or another, whether it's through sex, eating, intimacy, gambling, drugs, or just doing nothing at all. And now, we're hooked to our devices and the apps on them. Every like, share, ding on our phones triggers a surge of dopamine and it keeps us stuck and hooked to these screens. While this all may seem rather innocuous, the consequences of our dopamine-driven world has become more evident with rising rates of anxiety and depression. In this video, I'll go through dopamine, its reward system, and the dark side of this biological search for pleasure. But before I do so, I would really appreciate if you like this video, leave a comment down below. It really will help to spread this video to more people. And also, if you have a little bit more time, hit that subscribe button to help us create more content on boosting brain and behavior. So what exactly is dopamine? Think about your brain like a massive city with tiny messengers moving around through the streets, or in this case, connections. They move from one place to another, relaying messages to different areas. Dopamine is one type of messenger that helps different areas communicate to one another. It's super important because it helps the city, or your brain in this case, do things like learn, pay attention, and get excited. Now, when we experience something pleasurable, such as eating a delicious meal, having sex, or achieving some type of goal, this messenger called dopamine is released. And every time it gets released, we get that hit of pleasure. Accompanying that feeling also comes the anticipation of reward. Every time we see, smell, or feel something that we associate to that pleasure, dopamine is released, even before we actually experience the reward. This desire for pleasure and reward helps motivate us to repeat said behavior in the future. So there is an evolutionary purpose of dopamine. This dopamine system is thought to have evolved over time to help us survive and reproduce. Its purpose was to reward behavior for the sake of survival, such as eating, drinking, socializing, and mating. Dopamine is also involved in the brain's ability to learn from experiences. When we engage in behaviors that lead to positive outcomes like finding food or escaping danger, our brain releases the chemical. Over time, we learn to know which actions are beneficial for us and which are not. For example, in the past when we socialized with other tribes for added protection and safety, this would have promoted cooperation within groups, which was essential for hunting, protection from predators, and raising offspring. Dopamine also helped modulate our response to stress. In situations where a quick and focused response is needed, for example, encountering a wild animal, dopamine helped to enhance alertness and physical readiness. So, from an evolutionary perspective, the role of dopamine was always to help promote behaviors that would help in our greater survival. It was a way to ensure we as a species had the highest chance of success in a wild, dangerous world. In today's world, however, gone are the days where we're surviving for food and trying to be on the hunt. We are spoiled with an abundant amount of choice, with so many things to do at the tip of our fingers. And while enjoyable and entertaining as a lot of these things may seem, many of these companies have tweaked their algorithms to purposely target the dopamine triggers within us. As Shamath Palapatiya, a founder and CEO in Social Capital and former Facebook exec, once stated, Where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth. Your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. So social media likes and notifications are just one way the modern man has become programmed to seek for dopamine. Social media platforms are inherently designed to trigger dopamine responses through features like likes, comments, and notifications. When you receive positive feedback from others, your brain releases dopamine, creating a sense of reward. These platforms employ algorithms that deliver notifications strategically, encouraging you to check your account frequently. The unpredictability of when you receive likes or comments keeps you at the edge of your seat. As your brain anticipates the potential rewards of receiving that next like, follow, or engagement. Then there's video games and online entertainment, which is another way in which we get hooked to dopamine hits. Most modern games are precisely crafted to offer a stream of rewards via challenges and achievements. Each successful completed level or stage in the game leads to acquiring a new power-up, item, or in-game currency. This virtual reward sets off the dopamine release, creating a sense of accomplishment and pleasure. Game developers employ game mechanics like points, leaderboards, and virtual rewards to keep players engaged and motivated to play longer. And the gradual escalation of difficulty accompanied with the promise of bigger rewards are drivers for getting that next dopamine hit. And then there's instant messaging and constant connectivity, which can also release dopamine. Instant messaging apps provide a place to interact socially in the modern day, with every incoming message or notification serving as sort of a social reward. Chatting or receiving responses 
triggers a dopamine release, tapping into that need to connect. In the case of work, responding to messages or emails and clearing out all those unread inbox helps you feel as if you're being productive, thus producing a sense of reward throughout the day. Developers purposely create features like red receipts and chat bubble animations to make you feel constantly connected and motivated to respond promptly. This fosters a sense of urgency which then acted upon enough times becomes second nature. This is why some project management apps have a cool animation of success or celebration when you complete a task. Online shopping can also produce dopamine with a reward to us consume. When it comes to shopping, we are offered a range of rewards, discounts, special offers, and limited time deals. The simple act of adding items to your cart and completing a purchase triggers dopamine release of pleasure, making us feel as if we've done and earned something. Many of these e-commerce sites use personalized recommendations to target exactly what you want, and the implementation of techniques like countdown timers and other scarcity tactics such as limited offers are all created to induce a sense of urgency, so when you get that limited item, you feel rewarded. All of this is a never-ending loop. The algorithms deployed on these apps and platforms create feedback loops that encourage constant engagement. The more you interact, the more data they collect on you to personalize the experience and then deliver a trigger that will hit that pleasure center of your brain. The problem with this vicious cycle of dopamine addiction is that it can lead to a number of negative behavioral changes, some of which include things like increased impulsive behavior. Many of these dopamine-driven behaviors are acted on without thinking. We see or hear and immediately do. As mentioned earlier, you repeat this enough times and it can lead to habit formation where we have very little control over our impulses, engaging in risky sexual behavior and perhaps even substance abuse. And then there's this need for instant gratification. If you haven't noticed already, dopamine-driven behaviors often provide instant gratification. We need to satisfy our immediate urges and pull to check that notification, buy that product or respond to that message. The problem with this is this can lead to a need for instant gratification in other areas of our lives as our expectation for how quickly something should pan out is skewed. This can minimize our tolerance to deal with difficulties in relationships, goals, and personal life, never sticking to anything and always drifting. There are countless studies that show that delaying gratification can serve as a great indicator to whether someone will be successful. As evident from the famous Stanford Marshmallow Experiment, this study tested the ability of children to delay gratification to eat a snack present in front of them. The findings show that those who could resist eating a marshmallow immediately in favor of receiving two marshmallows later exhibited better self-control and later life success. And then there's our decreased attention spans. When we are constantly acting on these impulses, we find ourselves continuously distracted by the trigger, whether it be a notification or message. Then, the longer we stay on these apps or platforms, the more we find ourselves distracted from what actually matters in life. And as our attention spans get shorter and limited, which we talked about in another video many times, we end up spending our days doing a whole lot of nothing, yet feeling mentally exhausted nonetheless. The reason for this is because our brains have scrolled through so much stimulation and depleted much of our attentional resources, so we feel quite exhausted, even though in truth we actually haven't been that productive. And then there's isolation and loneliness. When we get hooked on these dopamine hits such as social media, content watching, or excessive gaming, we find ourselves isolated in a room for most of the time, stuck only to the screens. This can contribute to social isolation and feelings of loneliness, which lead to depression and social anxiety. So how do we break the dopamine feedback cycle? The dopamine feedback cycle is not set in stone. While it is a biological process, a part of human nature, awareness of this cycle alone is starting grounds to do better. Just as we've been programmed to seek for these dopamine hits via social media and more, we can learn to break the cycle itself, training ourselves in more positive, productive ways. For one, the first step is to identify what exactly triggers us to feel good. Ask yourself questions like, what are things that you do that make you feel good? Once you know your triggers, you can start to work in acting on them more strategically. You can also find healthy ways to reward yourself. Right now, we all live in a cycle of receiving dopamine rewards via empty likes and notifications, but instead, we should try to look for ways to replace these rewards with more fulfilling ones through exercise or learning something new. You should also try to set hard limits for yourself. Decide how much time you want to spend on digital devices per day and stick to that. Designate specific blocks of time within the day and track them for when you are allowed to check your phone or messages. The important thing here is to ensure you are strict to your restrictions and boundaries. And then be also mindful to your thoughts and feelings. Pay attention to how you feel when you're about to act on a dopamine-driven impulse behavior. Is it really necessary to check that message? What benefit will it give you if you do? And what will happen if you don't check it at me? Is it really the end of the world? Be conscious of these thoughts and question the necessity for each action you take. If it isn't extremely urgent, then look away from the screen. 
and also be patient with yourself. Don't grow impatient if you don't find yourself breaking out of the cycle immediately. That's the whole cycle of instant gratification hitting at you. These are learned behaviors programmed onto us for years, if not decades. It takes time to break dopamine addiction as you are battling your biological response to pleasure. So shifting behavior is never an easy thing. It takes intentional practice and reflection to really know how you're acting. You need to learn to be more conscious of each behavior in a single day, since most of the time, we're all acting on impulse and without thought. By learning to be more conscious and mindful of your behaviors, you can identify, mitigate, and improve. And if that is too difficult at the beginning, you can also use some apps that exist to get you started with preventing interact. If you've enjoyed what you watch, you can check out the next video where we talk about delayed gratification, and make sure to like this video so it can be spread to more people and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to help you mine the golden mind.